when I was working, my best friend, the, uh, his wife left him and he uh, hung himself in his closet. Mm. And I was the one to find him. And that hurt me. Um, what was his name? He... <clears throat> Mark. He was a petty officer first class. He was a Navy SEAL, corpsman. And his wife left him and he couldn't handle it no more. Mm. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. And I, <clears throat> they called me and said to go check him on his room. And he literally had to hold his legs up to hang himself. Mm. So. Well, yeah. that's rough. <clears throat> You're going to regret telling that bullshit story. That story of this guy hanging himself is just such bullshit. And it just tarnishes things like that. You just had to drop a seal bomb. You wouldn't give the guy's full name. It's just Mark. And you're thinking about it. See, what you got to watch when he, he has to think about it. And he pauses a minute. When they ask him the name, he's uh, Mark. And yeah, okay. This Urban Valor that posts this video up is catching a lot of flack uh, over this thing. And they're even mentioning me in there. You know, they're correcting the story about Noriego and, and what Swick actually is and all this. And guys are starting to ask, have Don Shipley verified this thing yet? And they want to know how you verify these guys. And this is what they write back up. I love this part about the VA and the American Legion because... We've never busted anybody that was falsely claimed, got into the VA under false pretenses in the American Legion. We verify veterans through multiple layers. Aside from the ones I served with, many of these veterans are part of a veterans organization, such as the American Legion, VFW, etc. That have been verified through their discharge paperwork, DD-214, and have membership cards. Oh, man, dude. Real, that's not good. Additionally, they are enrolled in the VA health care system and present their VA health care card or veteran ID card. If they don't have any of that, we ask for their DD-214. Lastly, I collect 10 plus service photos from every veteran we interview. This guy yaks on for 44 minutes. The worst part of trying to get through 44 minutes of that is this urban valor tags him as Special Forces, SWIC, combat veteran, homeless, senior chief, all this, to get views on there. And then he puts, manually puts in endless commercials. Every few minutes, there's another commercial so he can generate money uh, through this. And he's tagging it on my back and the backs of all these other veterans uh, out there with this bullshit, blowjob, crap, dick, shit, buck story uh, that he puts up there. He didn't verify anything. He didn't care. And he, if you are too dumb to recognize the bullshit that guy spewing, you have no business posting any other kind of veteran stories up there. Up over. What a dumbass. What a dumbass to post that bullshit up there like that and just sit back and ho-hum and agree with him and just shake your flipping head. The only thing worse than this guy spewing is the guy that posted that video up there. What a fucking train wreck, man. What a terrible train wreck of a fucking shit you are. Homeless special forces Navy guy. Disgrace the Navy. Disgrace all of us. All of us with this bullshit story that you post up as fact. And everybody else up here, every other comment is writing about the honesty that's coming. So, so refreshing to hear such an honest, ain't nothing honest about this guy. Nothing. Hey, what's up, Randy? Good morning, sir. <laughs> Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, let's just start it off, man. Um, you know, tell everybody uh, your name 
and uh, branch of service and the years you served. Very well, sir. My name is Randy Leeted. I joined the military in 1984, United States Navy. I retired as a senior chief petty officer, retired in 2007 of May. Mm. And uh, what, what job did you do in the Navy, Randy? Uh, originally, I uh, uh, went into conventional Navy and got an opportunity to go to special warfare. And first station I went to was Panama Canal when Noriega, we were taking Noriega over. Very quickly into this, the guy that's interviewing him asked what he actually did in the Navy. And he doesn't want to tell him. He just he quickly gets off of the conventional Navy thing. He doesn't want to tell him a rating he was in, what job he did. And he just quickly right, right into Naval Special Warfare as a special boat unit guy. I spent 24 years in the Navy, and I spent half of that telling boat unit guys to shut the fuck up and drive the boat. Watch this clip of him describing the capture by him, of them, him, them, us, of Manuel Noriega. Manuel Noriega was captured, I think, on January 3rd, 1990. He, they were, they invaded, uh, invaded Panama. U.S. troops invaded Panama uh, with the whole intent of capturing Noriega. And Noriega takes refuge in a church. And so they get the Army PSYOPs team out there and they just pump heavy metal music into this thing 24-7, blasting it in there, driving him insane. And he finally surrenders. He surrenders to a DEA, the DEA guys. That's it. There was no capture by any SEALs any Delta Force, and especially not a SWIC guy. It didn't happen. And this, his surveillance and the team surveilling him, and we can see his bodyguard, it is a total lie. You can believe nothing after that that comes out of this guy's mouth. And I mean absolutely nothing. It never happened. So um, you guys end up ca capturing this Noriega guy. Yes, we did. Is that right? Yes. So talk to me. How did you end up in his house? <laughs> Uh, uh, we used to go by every night and we would, you could actually see his bodyguards and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So they went in there, we went in there and, uh, we took him when we did a lot of intelligence back then. Mm. Not as much as we do today though, but, uh, they took his, uh, we took him and mm. you know what they did with the man? What? They sent him to Florida and put him in a condo when he was on the house arrest. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes, it is. Wow. This guy makes the U.S. military look like a bunch of pussies uh, doing that. The interviewer doesn't pick up on any of this, or he does and he doesn't care. Noriega, President Bush, tossed his ass in a prison in Florida and threw away the key. Died in 2017. They locked his ass away. They didn't put him in a condo, you moron. That's how stupid this guy is and how dumb the uh, interviewer is. It's, it's just bad. It's really bad. A floating barge is, is like a, a barracks that floats in the water because they didn't have any room to put us. Oh, shit. And... So we had security all around the, the piers to protect all the troops. Well, this Marine jumped in the water and we killed him because we didn't know who it was. We threw uh, grenades in the water, con concussion grenades, and it killed him and he was a United States Marine. Oh. Who did, who did you guys think it was? <clears throat> uh, well, the Panamanian military used to try to uh, put detonators on the on the piers and stuff. So when this when the, the when the marine jumped in the water, that you thought that he was yeah trying to set some shit up like that, huh? Yeah. Wow. Well, he was he was drunk mm. because they had a bar and he got drunk and he and they told us do not whatever you do do not go in the water at night and he did so mm, wow yeah that's very unfortunate he was only two, 21 years old too mm. Mm. 
My favorite one is this Marine that they killed in Panama, watching the guarding the barges from guys setting detonators on the piers and on the boats. You know what a detonator is? It's a blasting cap. Detonators detonate explosives. You don't put detonators on the docks and things like that, but oh well, that's splitting hairs. What isn't splitting hairs is a bunch of these guys running around with concussion grenades to fend off the sapper, the swimmer sapper, uh, Panamanians that are trying to kill them all. And some Marine jumps in the water and they blow him up with grenades and they kill him. Well, then he mentions the guy's age, 21. And I see this on here all the time. I was forced to kill a 12-year-old boy. Well, how would you know how old he is? Yet he remembers this, the guy being 21. And then he's not sure that story is catching on with that guy. So he tells him, well, he was drunk. So he throws that on there, this Marine that is drunk and so stupid, he jumps in the water while a bunch of them are running around with these concussion grenades. Then, to just add more on it, after that they told him, hey, we don't want anybody else swimming at night around these piers with all these guys with grenades in them. Come on, man. Oh, this guy is, this guy is really, really bad. He's bad. He's bad. There is not enough hours in a day to go through every bit of this video and dispel all the lies. It's just chock full of lies from one end to the other. He really goes out of his way to look noble. And one of the first things he does in here is mentions his reason for joining the Navy when asked. And he says his father was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. Well, that's pretty noble, but it never happened. There's no record of his father ever serving as a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. None. He talks about protecting his men in these combat situations. And if he'd only give his family 10% of what he gave to his men, the outcome for his life would have been different. That's noble. It didn't happen. He mentions a lot in the video, I'll be honest with you. He says that over and over again. I'll be honest. Whenever you hear somebody say, I'll be honest with you, get ready because here comes a load of shit. And he talks about these combat tours in Iraq, five of them to an Afghanistan, and when pressed, uh, he doesn't want to go down the rabbit hole. That's what the interviewer says. I know you don't want to go down the rabbit hole, so we'll just skip uh, over uh, that stuff. But he is a swick guy. He's a boat guy at best, and there is no record of that. He's not listed in the database, uh, swick database, as ever being a qualified swick guy. And that training started in 1991. Swick training, formal swick training. He's not listed up there. And uh, there's not enough hours in the day to uh, pull and go through uh, all this other stuff. It's enough. One lie begets another, begets another, begets another. I just know what's bullshit. And this is the, the biggest one right here. This is going to speak volumes to you and guide you through the final bullshit story that I pulled out of this thing that's notable to even put up. My favorite BS story in here is so unique for people to watch. Now, this guy is about to tell the truth without telling the truth. And we see this a lot with guys that uh, were dishonorably discharged, had really bad discharges in the military. They will always kind of claim that they struck an officer as justification for getting that dishonorable discharge. And he ordered me to kill women and children, so I struck him. And that justifies it. Oh my, well, I can see why. I'm good for you. There is truth to that story. The truth to that story is the guy did get a dishonorable discharge. The lie is he never did anything as being a SEAL or refusing to kill women and children. None of that ever happened. He's justifying this. So this where he's talking about the guy kidnapping his daughter in Texas and him hitting him so hard he went over this barrier and broke his back. Listen to the story and you tell me what's bullshit in this thing and what's not because he is telling the truth. But it's only that much. It's only that much. I took my kids to the swim pool on Lackland Air Force Base one day. And uh, I had a Suburban. The AC didn't work. And my daughter was six years old. And uh, I told my son, my son was 11 then, or 10, 10 or 11. I said, I'm gonna run in and prepay when I came out, there was a white van and a guy reaching in the window trying to pull my daughter out of the back of the Suburban. And I ran as fast as I could. And I hit him so hard, he fell on one of those. 
you know, those concrete things that protect the gas pumps. Yeah. Hit his back on it, broke his back. I was going to kill him. What? How old was your daughter? Six. He was trying to kidnap her? Yeah. From the fuck. So I, uh, I got him on the ground and I'm, I'm going to make this a slow death now because you, you don't mess with my kids. And next thing I know, I got two guns right up my head telling me to get up. They handcuffed me, take me to jail, call CPS. And after all said and done, my lawyer, he asked for all my military documentation, so I gave it to him. And the ju you know what the judge tells me? Hmm. Well, looking at your military record and all that, you should know better. I got two years of prison for that, man. Wait, this, who is the guy trying to kidnap your daughter? Who is the guy? Yeah, or was it law enforcement? No, or, no, or? it was the, the people who sex traffic. Wait, so you got fucking two years of prison for, okay. for, for, for knocking out this fucking guy that was trying to... Yes, kidnap your daughter? And the judge, the judge said that being in the military, I should have known better. And I, and I asked the judge very politely, I said, sir, if you, do you have children? He said, that's none of your business. I said, okay, let's just pretend you have children. What would you have done? And he said, what you should have done, you should have called the police. Your fucking daughter would have been gone by the time the police got there. Yeah. So... Where was this at? It was the south side of San Antonio. Holy fuck, dude. So I only did nine months, but I lost my job. I was on five years of community service. I had to do 175 hours, or five years probation, 175 hours of community service. The truth in all that is of what that judge said. When you listen to it, you will hear that and you can see this. Because he blames judges, uh, police officers, everybody's aghast, the interviewer's aghast because he got such a railroad job uh, in the criminal justice system for merely protecting his daughter when it was total bullshit. He got arrested for DUI with a child in the car under the age of 15. That's what happened to him. So when he talks about this judge getting down on him and saying, you should have known better. You should have known better. That's right. That's correct. I believe that. I believe that absolutely. Coming from a judge, you have served in your country in the military. You should have known better. Bam, and that gavel came down. It wasn't anything about kidnapping, but again, this is how you justify some part of your life like that. You blow this story up to where people go, oh, wow, I can't believe how bad you got screwed. Screwed? You chose to drive drunk with your, your probably uh, one of your kids in the car with you, and you got your peep slap, jerk. Boy, this guy finds a way to blame everybody for everything, just not lawyers and police officers and judges, he somehow finds a way to blame Black Lives Matter, the VA, the damn military, and all this other bullshit uh, that he's in, in, involved in. It's just, it's just total crap from start to finish. It's a sob story, a total sob story, a bullshit story. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have to prove or disprove every lie a liar tells. I'll just hit the highlights. Hey, thanks for being here, sir. Really appreciate it. Um, appreciate you, sir. It's a big contribution to Urban Valor for you to sit down and tell your story, so much appreciated. Got it.